Hello guys, so um, today I would like to make a video about katanas. Yeah, prune juice, that's good stuff. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah. When I did my, um, my sword video where I was cutting open the water bottles with a long sword, um, some of the students in my class who saw it asked why I wasn't using a what they called a samurai sword. Of course, the proper term for that is katana. And so, I guess I'll tell them why I wasn't using a katana or a samurai sword. Oh, here's a katana. Now, this is not the best example of a katana. This is a <clears throat> somewhat cheap katana, but I guess for the visual, at least it'll work. Now, I've wielded far better katanas than this. You now, we're very nicely balanced. And now, a lot of people think that katanas can cut way better than any sword, and that they're way stronger than any sword, and that they're way more maneuverable, and perfectly good for stabbing and slashing, that they're just the perfect weapon and they're the best sword that was ever made, and they're like Excalibur. And, and that is not true. Katanas are not bad swords, but they're not, quote-unquote, the best swords either. <clears throat> I believe Lindy Beige made a video where he said that, um, however his name is pronounced or spelled, he was really criticizing the katana. I don't believe, I don't agree with everything he says, but I definitely think he made a point in that video and other katana criticizations that Hollywood has made katanas look like the best or the most popular sword, when in reality they weren't. And they weren't the strongest swords either. And so I'm going to point out basically what a katana is meant for, what it's really meant to be used for, and what it's not. <clears throat> First of all, um, people would say that a katana is the most well-balanced, the lightest, most maneuverable sword that there is. <coughs> and I have to say I disagree with that for a few reasons. Um, a sword being well-balanced, I once walked into a store at the Renaissance Festival, and though they weren't selling cheap swords, they are selling pretty good quality swords are all hand forged made of you know high carbon steel and everything and they were all perfectly balanced all of them it was it was wonderful and I noticed although the katanas were beautifully balanced they were not as well balanced as the long swords or the straight swords and I thought that was interesting well I wonder why well, let's let's see why so when you look at a katana You'll notice there's a curve in it. You can see I'm trying to follow the curve on the camera. Yeah, the tip. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. See, curve. I'll move it straight out. And you can see curve. And this is actually why I was complaining about the handle not being on perfectly straight on the other sword. I may switch it back and keep it. I don't know. I test it. But the thing is, this side obviously is much thicker. Than the edge, which on a European sword it's double edged, which is one thing, plus the fact that it is curved more towards this way, you know, and therefore the weight is going to be leaning back like this, making it swing you make slower, making it a lot less balanced. Because the European sword, you think balance is not only the blade weighing as much as the handle, it's both this side weighing as much as this side and therefore it makes it really good to maneuver like this and go back and forth whereas with a katana it's not like that and therefore it's less balanced the weight leans towards this side and so no a katana is not the most maneuverable sword that there is <clears throat> now people would say oh well it's probably the best sword for cutting well I'd probably have to t disagree with this as well. I mean, first of all, well, actually, maybe maybe it is. But I have to make a few points. Well, the blade is thicker, so I know it's definitely probably not the best at slicing. It has a very thick blade, 
And so what it probably does is it chops or it cuts good because when it goes in, you hit it. And <clears throat> what happens is it, it cuts through and it wedges. And it, it's somewhat like an axe like that because of how thick the blade is on the back. Where a European sword is much less thick. Therefore, a European sword will probably slice better, which means slicing through water bottles better. You know, I know Gavco, a knife, <clears throat> knife maker on YouTube, he always talks about why he likes his knives to be thin, and that's because when they're really thick, they don't cut as well. Of course, they're harder to break using they're thick, but, <clears throat> yeah. So definitely, that is one thing, that they probably don't slice as good, but they probably do chop better because of that thickness that they have. <sighs> you know, and, you know, cutting and stuff like that, but... I can tell you they definitely do not stab as easily because when you look at the blade, look at how it's designed. It's curved up and then it comes to a point. Whereas with your European sword, it's equally on both both sides coming to a really nice fine point and it's sharpened on both ways. Here it's only sharpened one side and it curves up this way. Well, this means when you hit it, it's uneven and when you're going in, um... You have to follow that curve rather than just being able to go straight in, as well as the fact that you're hitting more of the edge and not as much as the tip going for the edge. Sort of like how, say, if we had pocket knives, if I had a stiletto and you had a tanto, I could stab through your flesh far more easier than your tanto could with my stiletto because <coughs> stilettos have much less resistance when they go through. <coughs> it's a much sharper point with much less material that needs to go in. And the Tanto would probably do more damage going in. For the Katana and the European Sword, I would say so, because the European Sword often gets wider or more wide as you stab through. So the European Sword would probably do more damage going in as well. Also, wideness does contribute to chopping, so... Maybe some European swords do chop better. Another thing I'd say about the design is, um, uh, that with a European sword, it's double edged. So when I'm attacking, I can swing both ways and still get the same result. But with a katana, that's not true. On one side, I have a blunt club, and on the other side, I have a sharp edge. And because of that, you can attack much faster with the European sword. You get twice as much. Instead of having to like re pull back, reload your swing, and then hit again. So, that's definitely one advantage. And so, another advantage with the stabbing with the European sword is that when you want to stab, you don't have to hook around to get it in. You can just straight forward. Well, you don't have to do this either, but you won't hit the tip as much. And, yeah. So, there are a number of reasons. Obviously, the pommel at the end of a European sword probably makes it more balanced out. <coughs> the, the long sword. So, really, <coughs> there is no quote unquote best sword. It's more of what your favorite is. And a lot of people think the katanas are their favorite. And a lot of people would say that long swords are their favorite. But, <coughs> to say that either one is quote unquote the best sword is simply not true and um uh yeah personally i would say that the long sword is the best or my favorite but in reality it it's not there's no quote unquote best sword it depends on why you want it and what you're doing and i think the long sword personally looks the best too i don't know a lot of some of you might like katanas rapiers i don't know but I think of some other things is that, um, oh jeez, what was I going to get at next? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it probably depends on, say, the longsword and the katana. Like, length makes a difference because when it's longer, it weighs more and it can be more effective like that, but also keep in mind that. It but it'll probably bend more. It can also make a difference between how hard the steel is. <clears throat> and as far as katanas being stronger than long swords, although they are much thicker, 
keep in mind that the Japanese did not have as quality iron as the um, Europeans had and other cultures had, therefore they wouldn't have the best quality steel because steel comes from iron. And <clears throat> basically their method of folding and forging and stuff was the result of them not having good quality steel. And the Vikings, from what I know, as well as the Europeans, their better quality swords were folded as well. And then eventually they could mass produce quality swords and they didn't need swords to be folded for them to be very good. I mean, folded, I guess, still still makes it better. But they didn't need good quality swords to be folded because they discovered how to heat treat them right. They discovered how to, you know, make them hard, temper them, stuff like that, use a better carbon quality steels. And they mastered this, and they had full suits of armor made of spring steel, high carbon spring steel and it could stop an arrow and they were able to make a lot more of much better swords you know ultimately I'd say the Japanese probably put more time and effort making sure each sword was better quality but I, I don't think it really matters that much like I heard I heard something I don't know if it's true I heard a tradition that samurai swords were only forged by the same person who forged them and it was called their sword master and their sword master would only have one sword and if the sword master died then they'd reforge the whole sword personally I don't know if this is true but if it is then that's highly ineffective and inconvenient I mean you want if you're supplying an army you want to have lots of soldiers wielding lots of swords you know you don't want to have your sword resharpened because just because <clears throat> the same guy that made the sword sharpened it doesn't mean it's going to be sharper. You mean we can use geometry today and we can get just the absolute right angle or even back then to make it sharp. So really it doesn't matter who's doing the sharpening. All that matters is you get your geometry right. So really that's what I have to say is that <clears throat> the katana or the samurai sword is not necessarily better or less good than the European sword. In a, in a lot of ways the European sword is probably better than the katana or the long sword is. I mean, what did I say? The European sword is better than the long sword? I'm sorry, that is, that is dumb. In, in a lot of ways, the long sword is probably better than the katana. A lot of people who argue for the long sword may say, well, it's longer. Well, they also have longer katanas as well. <clears throat> and that's the thing. And I remember once seeing a video where they said, oh, look, the katana can go through European armor better than a European, better than a long sword. Well, first of all, you used a katana that was much shorter, so it didn't bend as much. And second of all, the Europeans, their long sword, probably realized that when you're fighting someone, you don't have the time to count one, two, three, and hit the armor as hard as you can. You don't have time for that when you're fighting. They probably realized it's better to quickly find a way through the joint or something like that than to actually try to get through that really strong steel armor that was really hard to get through. So, <clears throat> really, I, I wouldn't say either. Personally, I, I like the long sword, but at, statistically, neither is really better. And I think that, again, Hollywood has really hyped the katana to make people think it's the perfect or the best sword. They think that, like, ninjas or samurais were the best warriors that there was. When really, I think that's not true, and ultimately it just depends on the European sword and the katana. I mean, you can have a really crappy European sword and a really great katana. That's bias, you know. That's why I said when I judged them, I went to a place that makes quality swords and makes some of the best of that quality. So, and judged two swords that they made. So, really, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you liked the video, and auf Wiedersehen.